Hi everybody and welcome to this um, last part of the Carrier Link Pro Drugs. So what we've done up to now is we discussed pro drugs. I gave you the basic definition of pro drugs, showed you some uses of um, pro drugs. Also, we discussed the different functional groups that you can use to develop your pro drug. Also, we discussed the different types of pro drugs, um, including your carrier link pro drugs and your biopreursor pro drugs. And um, we then went into a few examples of carrier link pro drugs and how you can use this method to improve patient acceptability, maybe increase potency, increase um, the likelihood for the drug to reach its site of action, improve bioavailability, and all of that. So what we've done up to now, we only looked at the bipartite carrier linked pro drugs. What I would like to do in this lecture session is to discuss the tripartite as well as mutual carrier link pro drugs. So the tripartite pro drugs. So a bipartite pro drug may be ineffective because the linkage is too labile, so basically too unstable, so in certain esters, or it may be too stable because of steric hindrances or because of hindrances to hydrolysis. So that, that's, that's sometimes the problems that we associate with bipartite products. Now remember, a bipartite product is a product that is combined for, through the active and the carrier link um, directly. So in a tripartite product, the carrier is not attached to the drug directly. It's rather attached through a linker. Therefore, more flexibility in the types of functional groups and linkages that can be used, and it also moves the cleavage away from the site, um, from the carrier. So, it is important to note that in this case, the tripartite is where you have the active drug that is conjugated through a linker or link it, linked through a linker, which is an inactive molecule, and then you have your carrier molecule. So this linker bond must be cleaved spontaneously after the carrier linker bond is broken. So once it has reached its site of action, or once it um, has done what it is supposed to do, then that linker bond needs to be cleaved spontaneously. So you have your intact tripartite prodrug, and then in the body, metabolic activation through esterase or amidase enzymes um, form, forms the drug, plus the linker, and then the carrier. So basically the carrier gets removed from the drug and the linker. And then a spontaneous reaction needs to happen, where you then have the drug and the linker. So then you have your drug in the body, um, which, is your, which came from your, bio, from your pro drug. So this is just a, a simple schematic to show you how a tripartite pro drug works and the way that we can use this to develop our pro drugs. So let's look at, the, at another example. An important strategy for tripartite carrier link pro drugs is the double pro drug, also known as the double ester com concept. And it works in the following way. In the first step, the carrier is removed via enzymatic hydrolysis by the esterase enzyme. So this is important to note. This is what happens in the body after you've developed your pro drug. It's a drug that's already been marketed. And this happens in vivo, in, in, in a human body. So in that first step, the carrier is removed via enzymatic hydrolysis. So here you can see this is basically what happened in that um, first step. Esterase enzymes broke this ester bond. And what you have then here is then only the carrier and your drug that's still con conjugated to the linker. In the second step, the linker is then spontaneously cleaved from the drug. So this is a very important property. You need to have a linker that is spontaneously cleaved from the drug. And one linker that we can usually use is, um, is, is this type of linker where it's a CH2 and then a O group, that's the linker. And what will happen once the carrier gets released, it will form formaldehyde. Now formaldehyde is an organic solvent, but in the concentrations in which this gets formed um, through this linker approach is so low that it doesn't really cause any toxic or side effects in a human body at this very low concentration. And then um, this linker then needs to be cleaved spontaneously or removed spontaneously. Thus then it releases the active drug. So the following schematic is a representation of how the double pro drug or double ester concept works. So this is quite important. It's a nice longer type question that I can ask in the exams on tripartite pro drugs. 
So let's look at an example of why it, where a tripartite prodrug um, strategy was used. And ampicillin, which is a beta-lactam antibiotic, now this compound only has very poor oral absorption of only 40%. And excess antibiotic may destroy important intestinal bacteria used in a digestion for biosynthesis of cofactors. So this is already a, a problem because you can't give this drug in higher concentrations to try and up the oral absorption uh, because of its poor oral absorption properties. So you can't really in increase uh, the concentration of this because it will lead to certain side effects. Also, if you have increased the concentration, it may also lead to a rapid onset of resistance against this specific antibiotic. So various bipartite carrier-linked esters were made, were made were too stable, so it didn't have didn't cause hydrolysis to the drug just remained intact. And the thiazoglidine rings sterically hindered the ester raises. So you can see this is the thiazolidine ring. And they tried to make esters using this carboxylic acid of ampicillin, but when they made bi bipartite carrier linked esters, it was just too stable. It's probably because of these uh, uh, CH3 groups on here causing some kind of hysteric hindrance, making it too stable, and the drug didn't get released from the prodrug. So, in this case, then they used what is known as the tripartite prodrug approach. So, to increase the absorption of ampicillin, the drug is linked to the lipophilic carrier. So, in this case, this is the lipophilic carrier known as neopentanoic acid via a double ester bond concept. So, the absorption of the prodrug, now called pivampicillin, so this is this one over here, this whole drug, this prodrug, is better than that of ampicillin. So, the absorption is much improved. So, after absorption into the blood, the carrier is released by esterase. So, this carrier, this neopentanoic acid, gets cleaved from that um, linker. And then following that, then there's a spontaneous release of the linker. And again, in this case, formaldehyde gets formed in very, very low concentrations, thus giving us ampicillin. So you see, this was an approach that they used um, to develop a tripartite prodrug of, um, of ampicillin to try and improve the, or the oral absorption of um, ampicillin. And this is actually a registered drug. I think it's FDA approved. And it's known as pondocillin, which is um, the prodrug of ampicillin. Then we also get mutual prodrugs. So a bipartite or a tripartite prodrug, um, is, or a mutual prodrug, is a bipartite or tripartite prodrug in which the carrier is a synergistic drug with the drug to which it is linked. So here is an example of some antibiotics. So we have ampicillin that has been conjugated through the double ester concept with a, form, a type of a formaldehyde linker uh, with a beta-lactamase inactivator. So this is an antibiotic drug that actually has two modes of action because it contains the two different actives that are connected to each other. So the hydrolysis of this drug gives one molecule of ampicillin and one molecule of the penicillinic acid sulfone, and then one molecule of the formaldehyde. So the ratio, it's an exact ratio. So this is also important that the two drugs, if you use a mutual prodrug approach, needs to be in the same ratio and needs to be released in the same concentration. That is one of the requirements when you develop a mutual prodrug. So a good example of a mutual prodrug is the combination of the beta-lactam antibiotic ampicillin and the beta-lactam inhibitor penicillinic acid sulfone. So we've already discussed this and you know them, how this double ester concept works. You know that we have um, the ampicillin here and we have the pen penicillinic acid sulfone gets released in vivo spontaneous release of the of, of formaldehyde of the linker forming formaldehyde giving us this ampicillin as well as the penicillinic acid sulfone um, in vivo so this is a mutual prodrug approach another good example of a mutual prodrug and we've discussed this previously is this mutual prodrug where they've used um, GABA and vigabatrin to link it via a linker and a carrier and this molecule here is 300 times more potent compared to GABA and Vigabetrin on their own. So this is also an example of a mutual product approach. So the ideal mutual, mutual products, up until now, we haven't really discovered an ideal mutual product, but whenever products get developed, especially mutual products, we strive to, to, to get to a mutual product that 
um, confirms with, uh, uh, with all of these properties. So the mutual prodrug approach is followed when it is necessary for two synergistic drugs to be at the same site of action at the same time. So the mutual prodrug approach will only be successful if the prodrug is well absorbed. So obviously if it's an oral dosage form, then the prodrug needs to be well absorbed. Both drugs need to be simultaneously and in the same concentration be released after absorption once it reaches its site of action. That's very important because you want, don't want one drug that is at a 10 molar concentration and one is at a 0 0.5 molar concentration, then the two drugs won't work synergistically. So the maximal effect of the two drugs needs to occur in a ratio of 1 to 1. So they need to be released at similar concentrations and the effect also needs to be 1 to 1. And the distribution and the elimination of the two drugs also need to be similar. So there should not be any drug-drug interactions between the drugs and the metabolism and the elimination or path of elimination needs to be similar. So these are just some of the requirements when you plan to develop an, a, a, a mutual pro-drug. It's just to keep these few things um, uh, in mind. So that brings me to the end of the carrier link products. So we discussed the bipartite, the tripartite, as well as the mutual products. So the only thing that is still left is to discuss the bioprecursor products, which I will discuss in the next online lecture. Thank you for your attention, and I really do hope that you enjoyed this part on, on carrier linked products. Thank you.